This is part 3 of Historic Auto Attractions in Roscoe, Illinois. This video is based on the incredible collection of items related to President John F. Kennedy. For example, this 1962 Lincoln Continental convertible was used by the President to visit troops at Fort Stewart, Georgia in November of 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The two suits were JFK's. He wore the one on the right while he was senator, and the one in the middle he wore as president of the United States. There was also a very unique Kennedy campaign dress on the left. That is one of Jackie Kennedy's jackets. Jackie's maternity dress that she probably wore while pregnant with Caroline or JFK Jr. That was worn by a very young Caroline Kennedy. Next to that is her yellow Easter outfit and JFK Jr's riding uniform. Jackie's necklace that was worn in that Life magazine cover. There is a whole display on the clothing of Camelot. Here they have 19 of Jackie's dresses designed for her by Ole Cassini. Jackie was very notable for her sense of fashion, which she was very educated about when she studied at the Sorbonne in Paris. The famous designer Ole Cassini designed over 300 outfits for her. He was hand selected by Jackie as her personal and exclusive designer in 1960, and these all belong to Jackie. I'm pretty sure this is the only place where you can see 19 of her dresses. This was her evening gown, worn while First Lady. While John is the most well known, his brothers Robert and Edward were also very important historical figures, but they don't really have any artifacts of theirs in this museum. Their eldest brother, Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., was a Navy bomber pilot during World War II, but he was killed during a mission. And this was his 1938 Harvard yearbook. That was Kathleen Kennedy's wristwatch. She was the sister who died in 1948 in a plane crash. There are some articles about George, the magazine that JFK Jr. owned and produced before he also died in a plane crash. That's some of the president's hair. That is his golf ball and two of his tees. He was an avid golfer and they are personalized for him. Mr. President is labeled on that golf ball. One of John F. Candy's Lord Elgin watches. Kennedy wore these shoes while he was senator from 1953 to 1960. One of Jackie's hats and a whole bunch of her shoes designed by Cassini. They also have her formal gloves and her comb. That is a coffee with Kennedy cup that JFK used during one of his many breakfast events during the 1960 campaign. This is a Kennedy for President styrofoam campaign hat that JFK briefly wore during a campaign stop in Baltimore. A hat designed by the famed designer Harry Roenick for John F. Kennedy along with his weird wax head. That is a section of wood from the inaugural platform on which John F. Kennedy delivered his famed inaugural address on January 20th, 1961. That big flag bunting was on the inaugural platform. This was built on the east front of the U.S. Capitol building. They now do it on the west side facing the mall. That is the Lord Elgin watch that Kennedy wore at the inaugural ball. And that is the tuxedo jacket and the shoes he wore at the inaugural ball. This is the flag that flew over the U.S. Capitol during his funeral on November 25th, 1963. Those are dictaphone belts, manual folders, and an earpiece that was used by Kennedy and his secretary Evelyn Lincoln for administrative and documenting purposes in the Oval Office. There's another little clipping of his hair. And this is a very unique relic, a preserved piece of JFK's 45th birthday cake from the Madison Square Garden event in 1962, where Marilyn Monroe very famously sang Happy Birthday to Mr. President. And the cake is still intact, ready to be eaten. 
kind of. Apparently the owner, Wayne Lensing, has taken a tiny bite of the cake. I mean, if I owned it, I guess you have to, you know? On November 22nd, 1963, the President and First Lady were riding in an open-top presidential limousine in a motorcade through downtown Dallas, Texas, when the President was tragically gunned down. There are wax figures of JFK and Jackie as they appeared on that day, in a 1963 Lincoln convertible. This is not a replica of the presidential limousine. The real one, although significantly altered after the assassination, is at the Henry Ford Museum. But following behind the president's limousine is the real Secret Service car that was following directly behind the president's limo when the assassination took place. This is the Secret Service car 679-X that is in the picture here taken by James William Hyde and Alton's and this will be two seconds after the president suffered the first shot. And so the vehicle that you see in the photograph is this vehicle. It's a 1956 Cadillac Secret Service limousine where Secret Service members were keeping an eye on things, and some agents would stand on these side running boards there. One such Secret Service agent was Clint Hill, who was standing on this sideboard on this side when the shots rang out. He leapt from the board onto the President's vehicle and tried to get the First Lady back from picking up JFK's splattered brains on the trunk and got her back in the rear seat, and he shielded them with his body until they got to Parkland Hospital. Unlike Kennedy's assassination car today, this car looks exactly as it did on that fateful day in Dallas, Texas. The assassination of John F. Kennedy is still one of the most shocking and tragic events in American history, and this setup here at Historic Auto Attractions very well depicts the motorcade through Dealey Plaza when the shots rung out. This is an original negative taken by the FBI after the vehicle returned to DC, still splattered in blood. And this is some of the real upholstery from the assassination vehicle that is John F. Kennedy's blood stained on it. These are some items related to the Hotel Texas, where JFK spent his last night on November 21st. That is an exhibition pamphlet left in Kennedy's room that night. An art exhibit was organized for the President and First Lady at their hotel rooms. I would like to read that and see what was there. I do know that there was a Van Gogh. Kennedy took this notepad from his Hotel Texas room and put them in his Air Force One desk while on the short flight from Fort Worth to Dallas. These are the contents of the briefcase that the President brought with him on the Texas trip. This brown leather eyeglass case was removed from the President's desk on Air Force One by an attendant at the direction of the new President Lyndon Johnson. He requested that en route to Love Field before boarding Air Force One and taking the oath of office. An original press kit and script for Oliver Stone's JFK, and an Air Force One press pass from November 22nd. This is incredible. The eyeglasses worn by Evelyn Lincoln on Air Force One when Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in as the 36th President of the United States. In the famous photo, Evelyn Lincoln is the person standing between Johnson and Jackie. These papers were removed from Kennedy's Oval Office desk on November 23rd, 1963. Kennedy left them there during the Texas trip, but never returned to them. This is a piece of the platform that Kennedy spoke on at Brooks Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas on November 21st, one of his last speeches. This is Dr. Berkeley's medical bag. He was Kennedy's personal physician, and he carried this bag around with him in Dallas. This was Evelyn Lincoln's purse that she carried in the Dallas motorcade. This is the scissor jack from the president's limousine, and this was on board when he was shot. I'm not really going to get into the conspiracy theories regarding the assassination, but they have a piece of the original grassy knoll fence that was there on that day in 1963, where many believe an assassin was stationed. The whole fence was at the now closed Conspiracy Museum in Dallas, and the owner of that museum gave this piece to Lensing. There is a lot of graffiti on the back. The most interesting inscription states, it was Johnson. 
These are artifacts of Carl A. Peden, and he was co-pilot on the way back to Washington with the body of the slain president, along with a new president. This is the printing plate of the Dallas Morning News, November 23rd edition, that announced Kennedy's death in that city. The alleged assassin is Lee Harvey Oswald, who worked and shot from the Texas School Book Depository. He immediately but casually left the building and got in this 1962 Checker Marathon Dallas taxi cab, which makes this Oswald's getaway car. He had driver William Wayne Whaley drive him back two blocks from his rooming house. Whaley tried to make conversation with him. He apparently asked, what the hell do you think happened? And Oswald didn't answer back. The fare was 95 cents, and Oswald gave him a dollar and said, keep the change. Captain Fritz. Two days later, while in custody, Lee Harvey Oswald was fatally shot as police were about to move him from the city jail to the county jail. This is the ambulance that the fatally wounded Oswald was put into and rushed to Parkland Hospital, the same place where Kennedy was taken two days earlier, and he died in a room feet away from the room that Kennedy died in. This vehicle was formally displayed at the Tragedy in U.S. History Museum in St. Augustine, which was a very great and old school museum that unfortunately closed way back in 1998. And this is the original display sign. That is Oswald's gray sweater, a similar rifle to the one Oswald used. And this is the actual catalog that Oswald owned and used to order the gun that he used to kill Kennedy. It was addressed to A. Hiddle, one of his aliases. This is the suit that Lee Harvey Oswald wore at his wedding to Marina Oswald. He purchased this when he was in the Soviet Union and brought it back with him when he defected. In 2011, Wayne Lensing got a hold of Lee Harvey Oswald's original grave marker from Fort Worth. It was removed in 1967, and apparently Oswald's mother kept this in her home due to fears of it being stolen again. A family purchased that house and the grave came with it, but a distant relative sold it to historic auto attractions, and it was displayed right here in this room. In 2016, the old owner of that house sued to get the gravestone back, claiming that the selling was not authorized, and he did legally win it back. It's now at the Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas, which unfortunately doesn't allow photography, so I do wish it were still here in this collection. This paper was signed by former President Gerald Ford, reconfirming the Warren Commission findings in 2003. He was a member of the Warren Commission. That's a brick from the Texas School Book Depository. This is a chair from the Texas Theater. Oswald snuck into a showing here about an hour after the assassination, but he was found and caught there. That's Jack Ruby's suit jacket. This is the uniform of Officer Nick McDonald, the arresting officer of Lee Harvey Oswald. These are the actual shoes Jack Ruby was wearing when he shot Oswald. They also have his hat. This is a guide to Dallas Entertainment. Ruby did own clubs in the Dallas area, and this was in Ruby's pocket when he shot Oswald, and he himself was arrested. That gun was commonly carried by Ruby in his booth as a hidden backup gun, and the gun to the right of that belonged to Dallas PD Captain Will Fritz, who was in charge of the Kennedy assassination and Oswald murder investigations. That is the original license plate from the ambulance over there that transported Oswald to Parkland. And this is Jack Ruby's necktie. It has a mezuzah symbol on it. This is Detective Jim Lavelle's autograph. I found out the day I visited here that he had passed away the day before, on August 29th, 2019. This is the scene of Oswald's murder with wax figures of Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald. That is a bullet fired from the gun that Jack Ruby used to kill Oswald. A hundred rounds were shot from it at one point for souvenirs. That is Jack Ruby's polygraph test. The House Select Committee concluded that he apparently lied twice when he stated that he had never met Oswald before and that he had not assisted Oswald in the assassination. 
This is the window from the Texas School Book Depository that was directly to the right of the window which Oswald shot out of. Oswald's window is still kept by the FBI, but this one was right next to it and witnessed everything. And there's a diorama of Dealey Plaza and the assassination scene below it. Finally, we enter a replication of the East Room in the White House, where Kennedy's casket lay in state on November 23rd for private viewings of family and government officials before being removed on the 24th for a funeral procession to the Capitol, the funeral at St. Matthew's, and the burial at Arlington. Here in the center is the actual flag that was draped over Kennedy's casket while it lay in state in the East Room on November 23rd. The flag was switched out for the ceremonies of November 25th, and that is the flag that was folded and presented to Jackie at Arlington, and it is now in the collections of the JFK Library. Mr. Farrell informed me that they don't advertise this flag, and outside of the museum, don't really provide information on how they acquired it out of respect for the Kennedy family, but they do have a placard in the room that provides evidence of what happened to this flag. Before visiting, I was unsure if this was a real thing, but now I'm very certain that this flag did drape the casket of President Kennedy, which is incredible. They also have the veil that Jackie wore during the funeral on November 25th. This is also an iconic and unbelievable relic of such a tragic day. This is a piece of cloth that was used to cover the catafalque in the East Room while Kennedy lay in state. This is the flag that flew over the Capitol building on November 21st, when Kennedy left Washington for the last time. Those are all 17 issues of Life magazine which Jackie Kennedy was featured on. The Kennedy collection here is nothing but impressive. I highly recommend a trip for any Kennedy buff just for this one exhibit, but there's still much, much more here at Historic Auto Attractions, so please check out part four, and thanks for watching.